uh, the crowning of Jesus, that's part of, by, by the people, they uh, hail the son of David and all that. As Dundas points out, that's a classic part of the mythic hero archetype. But then the same people turn on him. The same kind of reversal happens there. Uh, he's, oh, I forgot to say the uh, persecution by a tyrant when he's an infant. That's told of Caesar Augustus, uh, Moses, Krishna, uh, Zoroaster, and so on and so on. Uh, the, the passion narrative, uh, that, again, that has, that's most most like the dying and rising God thing, but even if you secularize it and have him uh, stand trial before the Roman procurator, there's a very similar one in Apollonius's life where he's uh, made to stand trial before the Emperor Domitian and miraculously gets out of it. Uh, the notion of uh, post-mortem appearances, Romulus who vanishes during a, a battle, no one can find any trace of him. He appears several times to the senators and others, and he says in one version, I've now become the God Quirinus, and another one he said, I was a god and came to earth. But in any event, they say uh, he, he was a king of Rome, and he said, One day Rome will become a great empire if you guys go forth and spread this, my worship and so on. Uh, Apollonius even appears in a Doubting Thomas story to one disciple who just cannot believe in immortality and figures even the sage is dead, even though he's ascended bodily into heaven. And, and uh, Apollonius appears to him, though no one else can see him, and, and convinces him that that uh, indeed he's immortal and so will the disciple be. Uh, the empty tomb stories, you find a few of those in contemporary novels like Caritan's uh, Kyrius and Caliraway where this guy's uh, lover has been... Uh, killed, he thinks, though she's only in a coma. She's been prematurely buried in an opulent tomb, and he comes to visit, but in the meantime, the tomb robbers, seeing that it is a rich person's tomb figure, there must be all kinds of goodies in there they can steal, so they open it up, and she's reviving, and they don't want a witness left of their theft, so they kidnap her. Uh, well, they, here come her friends and relatives to find the tomb open, and the, the grave clothes left there, and says, oh, the gods have taken her up. They were jealous of me and my love, and then he realizes that no she's just been kidnapped and goes off to find her and in the course uh, of the adventure he gets crucified but survives it and the same thing happens in a few more of these novels all around the second century well you got crucified heroes that survive the cross you got people that are entombed alive in in rich people's tombs to attract tomb robbers and then you have a final uh, reunion scene where they think you must be a ghost. Uh, I, I gave you up for dead long ago. No, it's really me. Uh, and uh, you, you begin to think all of this stuff was well known. These are popular novels and popular myths and, and so forth. Is it pure coincidence that this stuff shows up in the Gospels? I, I don't think so. I just don't see how you can say, oh, no, none of that matters. I'm a big comic book fan. Suppose uh, you said, well, Batman, the Martian man out of the Green Lantern. Well, these are clearly just fiction, but Superman. Now, now that really happened. Uh, there's just no reason to think that. They're all comic books. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and so I just see the same thing. In fact, there's this great... 60s story about Superboy. Uh, he, he somehow gets a hold of a history book from the future. He can travel through time. And uh, he, he sees in this history book that they say, well, there used to be many fantastic characters of folklore that never existed. Santa Claus, uh, William Tell, Paul Bunyan, and Superboy. He goes, hey, what's this? And so he goes into the future to demonstrate to these people that he was a real historical figure. Uh, well, though the joke's on the reader, right? Because because there wasn't a Superboy. It's j even this is just a story, and it seems to me that's what's going on with all these apologists. Yeah, this dying and rising God who went through the whole thing. This one is to Apollonius of Tyana. Oh no, no, that's just silly. But, but Jesus. A six of one half a dozen of the other. I don't think it would be better if there were no Jesus. Uh, it, it's a matter of indifference. It, it, and there might have been, but it just seems to me uh, the burden of proof is on the person that would say that there was because it's just special pleading again. You want special treatment for your favorite savior. I mean, why are there no Mithraists or Apollonius of Tyana advocates out there making these cases? No, it's only representatives uh, of fundamentalist Christianity.